Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Resurrection Retreat. How is your Easter season going? Today is May 1st. Happy May Day, month of Mary, the month of May. And uh, as of right now, we are actually 30 days, exactly 30 days away from Pentecost. It's interesting when you think about the Easter season being 50 days long. We are 20 days away from Easter. Easter happened about three weeks ago, and Pentecost is coming in 30 days. So we're not even halfway through Easter season yet. So in the midst of this coronavirus quarantine that we're in, my question for you in this season is, what are you doing to make the resurrection real in your personal and everyday life? That's an interesting question. Most people get very intentional about their faith for a few weeks from February to March. You give things up, take on extra devotions, try to live more simply, etc. And we call this season Lent. What I find interesting is that Lent is very much about repentance and conversion from sin, giving up the old bad habits, negative thinking patterns. But when it comes to faith and becoming disciples, simply giving up sin and conversion of life is less than half of the equation. There's still the learning process. There's still the growing process. You know, it's one thing to avoid committing any sins via the Ten Commandments. It's another thing to grow in the Beatitudes. And that's where our faith challenges us. So Lent, interestingly enough, is only 40 days long. But Easter is 50. So my question is, are you putting the same energy into living Easter as you did Lent? And... Like most people, the, the reality is probably no. I've never even thought about it. So the question is, why not? One reason I think most of us miss out on the Easter season is that we're tired from Lenten sacrifices and practices. Right? We, we finally got over it. I get to eat my chocolate again. I get to drink my coffee. I get to do whatever it was. And I want to celebrate. That makes sense. 40 days is a long time. But there's a reason why 50 is longer, why Easter is longer. And part of that is because we need to grow in the discipline of faith. Another reason I think that people miss out on Easter season is we get stuck in Holy Saturday, and waiting for the resurrection in our own lives. We get stuck in the very real pain, grief, loss, shame, whatever happens to be despair, depression of our own losses and our own experiences. And so while the rest of the world moves on, while the liturgical calendar moves forward, everybody's celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, we ourselves get stuck with death and loss on Holy Saturday. We're still waiting for that resurrection. Another reason, perhaps, is that sometimes we skip over the holy season of, of, of Easter because we can't wait for the blessings of the Holy Spirit. We rush past it, right? Uh, waiting for a day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit and abundant graces, the miracles, all that beauty, all that blessing, right? And so while the resurrection stories are nice, you know, we, 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 we want to get past that. But the church, in its wisdom, calls us not to just wait for Pentecost, but to truly enter into the personal healing and the small resurrections that we find in the Easter season. Jesus said, I have come to you that you might have life and have it abundantly. So let's take some time this Easter season to discover and receive this abundant life. So what are we doing with this resurrection retreat? That's what it always kind of gets at. You know, why are we having a resurrection retreat? Why now after all this time? Part of the reason is because we're exactly or are almost exactly in the middle. When it comes to growing in our faith, when it comes to growing as disciples, it's easy at the beginning sometimes because we have all those extra graces you know, encouraging us. We have a community. We're coming off a high of a retreat or what have you, and it's easy to get started. A lot of times, it's also easy to end a project because you're so close to being done that it's exciting, right? You, we see this in people who are later in life, who perhaps are approaching the kingdom through death. They, they know they have cancer. They know they're getting older. And and they begin to really take things seriously because they're close to the end. And so there can be real grace and peace going forward. Where we are right now in this season is right in the middle. Right in the middle is also the hardest time of any 
type of project or growth or long-term vision is in the middle because the excitement of everything in the beginning has worn off, right? And we see this in Lent as well. You know, you get we, we start off with Ash Wednesday, everything really, really excited. Then we get to a certain point where we lose enthusiasm, we lose our focus. And then all of a sudden it's Holy Week and you're like, oh no, I missed out on what I was doing sort of thing. I wanted to pray more. I want to do this more. I wanted all these things and it didn't happen. We also see this with diets, right? People start a diet and then they start getting hungry. And after a couple of days or weeks, they give in and it's over. Or an exercise routine, you know, here's resolutions that we give up on. We don't want to lose that in Easter. So that's part of the idea behind this resurrection retreat. We're in the middle. We're in quarantine. We're at a point in which it's easy to give up. It's easy to lose heart. It's easy to forget about the resurrection because that was so long ago. But I'm here to tell you something you've never heard before. I'm pretty sure you've never heard this before. And that is the theme of Easter season. The reason why this is 50 days long is that the Easter season is not about Jesus' resurrection and triumph over sin and death. Now, you might find that hard to believe. Like, what do you mean? Well, it is about Jesus, obviously. It is about the resurrection day, his triumph. But the season itself is not about that one day. The season itself, and we can see this in the readings, the season of Easter is about us. It's about Jesus coming to us. It's about having deep personal encounters. If we look at the scriptures, we see that Jesus goes out to his disciples and he encounters each and every one of them deeply and personally and he brings their hearts back to life in preparation to be set on fire with the Holy Spirit. And that is what the season of Easter is really about. It's about our opportunity to experience the risen Lord who brings us back to life. Not just about him being back to life. It's about him finding us in our moments of grief, sorrow, doubt, fear, depression, whatever it happens to be. That he goes and finds us and brings us back to life. He brings us out of Holy Saturday to Resurrection Sunday, all the way to Pentecost. And so throughout this retreat, what we're going to be doing uh, every week, it's going to be once a week, I'll have a new uh, video, audio podcast for everyone. But the idea is that we're going to look at different resurrection experiences encounters the first one we'll get to will be mary magdalene we're also going to look at thomas we're going to look at cleopas and the other disciple and peter again so the goal of this particular retreat that i'm inviting you to join me on is to experience the resurrection and new life that jesus has for us to experience the risen lord as the disciples did in a deeply personal way and to move us along from being consumers of faith to really growing in discipleship in preparation for Pentecost. So think of this retreat, these next 30 days, as a period of preparation. Now, I found something out interestingly enough. I did a little research on this. Did you know that most sports teams have an intensive period of training camp and preseason before the regular season begins? For example, look at the NFL. The length of time from the beginning of training camp for rookies is usually July, late July, middle to late July. And the end of the preseason, when you get to the kickoff in September, is approximately 50 days long. Isn't that interesting? If we look at our sports teams, particularly if we look at the NFL, that they're a season of preparation, their season of getting ready for what they truly love to do and, and, and want to do, which is this season. That preparation, that training camp is 50 days long. So I want to invite you to be part of this resurrection retreat. We've already passed 20 days, and now we really need to revamp and go a little bit more intensive in renewing our faith and, and really be part of this Easter season. Not simply remembering that Jesus rose from the dead, but looking more closely and walking more closely with the disciples as Jesus brought them back to life. So, how do we go on a personal virtual retreat? Most of us are, are familiar with only one kind of retreat. There are many, many models out there. 
right? But most people have only ever been on the uh, three or four day model. So such retreats like Axe or CEO Koinonia, you know, these are all retreats that are that are that are based on the same model, the same idea. And what you find on these retreats is is you have a couple talks, you have a lot of community times and sharing, and people encounter Christ through the community of faith gathered, the people who are there sharing their faith, the encouragement they find, and as well as through the talks, as well as through the sacraments, as well as through the prayers. But it's also very intensive over three or four days, and it leaves you on a great big high. And that's a wonderful thing. But if you've ever been on these, then you'll know that there is a coming down off that mountain. There is a point where you come back down and you you encounter real life and the difficulties that you left behind when you went on a retreat, you're going back to. There's another model I want to propose to you. And, and it's a much older model, a deeper, longer, and quite frankly, in my opinion, a more powerful retreat experience. And these are the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. If you've ever done them, if you've ever heard them, then of them, then you'll know what I'm talking about. And I believe one of the reasons that the spiritual exercises is so uh, great and impactful is that it goes deeper than these other retreats can, because it goes into a self-reflection. So usually on a retreat, you hear all these other retreat talks and everything else, and you're learning more and more about about Jesus' love, his mercy, his goodness, his grace, his, his forgiveness. And again, this is the, the emphasis typically on the purgative. But when we go through the, the Ignatian exercises, we spend more time in the illuminative, illuminative phases. There is a lot of purgation going on, trust me. But at the same time, it's an opportunity for us to grow in a different way. And, and they usually take longer. You can do the Ignatian spiritual exercises for one week, or a weekend, or a month. You know, uh, last one I did was a month. So, but it, but you do it on your own. And the beauty of this type of retreat, in the and I think the strength of doing this particular retreat for us, is that you have to be intentional. You have to go beyond your your feelings to this and really make a go of this. So, how do you make this? This particular retreat. So we're not going to do the, the spiritual exercises. That is that is a totally different thing. Um, but we're going to take some components to that. We're going to take some understandings from that. So one of the things I want to talk about really quickly is the difference between thinking, feeling, talking, doing, and being. A lot of us are feelers. A lot of people love going on a retreat and they love the feeling. But we need to challenge that feeling with thinking. Like, how are you thinking about yourself? How are you thinking about God? How are you thinking about the situations you're in? and help our thinking to go beyond our feeling and inform us. Because a lot of times we'll have that tension that between what we know we believe, we're supposed to believe in our faith, and how we feel. And that's a very real struggle sometimes, a lot of times for people. And so this is where we need to grow in the thinking part to overcome the feeling. Another aspect is talking versus doing. There are a lot of people that are big talkers, big talkers about faith. You know, we see this in Peter. We talked about it in the last retreat for Holy Week. You know, Peter says, oh, Lord, I will never leave you, right, at the Last Supper. And what does he do? He, he denies Jesus three times and he runs off. You know, he abandons Jesus. So it's one thing to be a big talker, and, and a lot of us do that. We talk about it because we're based on our emotions. Emotions lead us to these feelings, and the feelings lead us to talking, and and when the feelings go away and the talking is done, where are we? This is where the thinking and the doing come in. Are you a doer of faith? And Jesus, again, at the Last Supper, gives them the example of, of service, right, by, by washing their feet. And he says a very important phrase that we need to remember throughout this retreat is, blessed are you if you do it. And so we have to do it. We have to do the follow through for our lives. And all of this leads to our being. And ultimately, that's where we want to be disciples. We want to be uh, in the presence of God. We want to be people who have been transformed. Not just thinking about it, not just talking about it, not just feeling it. We want to be it. We want to be the change that we wish to see. People God wants. And so this is part of what we need to, to do. There's three components to this retreat. First component 
is the weekly reflection on the scriptures and reflection questions. And I'll be leading you through those every week. There'll be a new uh, post on the, on this retreat site on our YouTube and on Facebook saying uh, what the talk is and what, where we are in this process. And so your, your goal is to listen and it'd be great if you can listen with friends, listen with family, comment to me or personally message me, that kind of thing. And, and we can have an ongoing discussion on the talks uh, because it's good to do these things in community. So that's just one step. Next step is the daily examine. And this is where I'm, I'm borrowing from St. Ignatius and the spiritual exercises. The daily examine is a way of looking at your life every day. Now, most of us, when we hear the words examine or daily examine, we're thinking of an examination of conscience, which is usually for the confession of sins. You know, I'm going to go to confession and I need to do an examination of conscience so I know what to confess. Well, the examine from St. Ignatius is different. It's it's less about remembering the sins that you've committed. Okay, like, yes, you do do that, but it's, there's much more to it. The examine that I'm suggesting to you is more about developing a habit of self-awareness and reflection of what God is doing in your life. Where is God at work in transforming you? So one way to think of the daily examine is like a mirror. So I assume every day, or I hope every day, you look at yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror as you brush your teeth, as you put on your makeup, as you comb your hair, as you shave. And the reason why we do that is to get an idea of of where we are. It's a good tool. A mirror is a good tool to help us. You know, if I'm shaving and, and I miss a, a patch or a spot and I don't have a mirror to see it, I'm going to look pretty funny, right? Um, or if I'm putting on makeup, you know, ladies, you know, putting on makeup and and you you miss a spot or I don't know, I've, I've seen someone do this before with, with their lipstick and it goes off a little bit. And there's a little streak coming off your cheek. And I was like, oh, you must not have used a, a mirror. Well, that's what the daily examine is like. It's like a spiritual mirror in which we can look at our thoughts, our emotions, our words, our actions, and our attitudes. Growing in a deeper faith involves becoming aware of our thoughts of doubt, our emotions, our fear, uh, our attitudes, especially of pride. And, and it's something that many times we're not aware of, and so we have to take that time to look at ourselves in a mirror. And that's what the daily examine helps us to do, helps us to look at ourselves. If we don't take the time to look at ourselves, we cannot know how we need to change. If I don't take the time to look in the mirror, I don't know how crazy my hair looks, that I need to, I need to brush it, or that I need a haircut, or any number of things. And so when it comes to growing the spiritual life, part of being very intentional about it is doing something like the daily examine. And remembering that it's so much more than just looking at the sins we've committed, it's, it's about a deeper growth experience because the examination, the daily examine, is also an invitation for us to find the presence of God in all the people and events of our day-to-day -day lives. The examine is just a wonderful way to grow daily intentionally in, in following Christ, in following the Lord, and adapting our character and our spirit to him letting him change us so that's that's the second aspect so we're going to have the weekly reflections we're going to have daily examine and then last but not least is a spiritual journaling i highly recommend that you guys keep a spiritual journal or notes on this retreat as you go through it keep track of your thoughts your prayers your insights your desires and resolutions throughout the retreat why because it's one way to remind yourself of those things. Again, we're very emotional people. We love to, to feel things and we love to talk big. But when you write it down, it's a way of keeping yourself accountable. And if you can share those with other people that you trust as a, to, to walk with you, it's a way of keeping yourself accountable to these things so that your thoughts are reminded and our will is strengthened to walk the path that we said we wanted to. Right? We said we wanted to, to follow through and allow God to continue to work in our lives. And the interesting thing is that God actually works best in our lives over time. And he chooses to work in patterns in our life. There's certain patterns in our life that God uses 
and we can recognize when this happens, you do this. When this happens, you do that. And, and we we're able to follow more closely because we can see how God is leading us. He's not just in the dark. He leads us very clearly sometimes. We have to open our eyes to see that pattern. And journaling helps us to do that. It helps us see more clearly the movement and direction of God in our lives. So as we, as we end this uh, introductory talk, because every, ta- every retreat has an intro, right? So this is the introduction to the resurrection retreat. Thank you for listening so far. Um, and what we're going to do right now is we're going to um, I'm going to walk you through the steps of a daily examine. And I'm going to post this in the description so you can look at it and, and hopefully follow this every day. Um, what I'll most likely end up doing maybe next week is having a PDF document that you can then download and put it up on our parish website or have a link to it down here so that you can see it. But this is... Uh, these are the steps to a daily examine of conscience or a daily examine of life. So we begin by placing ourselves in the presence of God or, or remembering we're always in God's presence. He's always with us. Take a slow breath, deep breath, another breath. We'll go with step one. Step one is about thanksgiving. This is a great method for personal prayer as well. If you're not in the habit of praying every day, This is a great way to grow deeper in prayer. So step one is is thanksgiving. What am I especially grateful for this past day? This works great if you're doing it in the end of the day. It also works at the beginning and middle of the day. Whenever you have the chance, think about what are you thankful for? A few things you can say are gift of another day. I'm thankful just to be alive. Thankful to have this day. In, in whatever comes my way. Also, think about the love and support you have received so far. Think about the people who love you, who support you, who encourage you, people who walk with you. Even if it's been a while, think about them. Be thankful for, for their presence in your lives. Tell God, thank you. Thank you for their love and support. Next, think about the courage that you have to have for today. The courage to get out of bed, the courage to go to work, the courage to face a particular fear, the courage to to be thankful in this moment, uh, even though you're struggling in areas of your life. Be thankful for the grace of, of our parish, the grace to be able to have access to this retreat. And the last thing to be thankful for is think about an event that took place today, or maybe yesterday, depending when you're doing this. Uh, if you're doing this in the evening, think about the whole day. If you're doing this in the morning, think about yesterday. Uh, think about things that happened throughout the day. What happened in your life? Another way to think of it is where was God present that maybe you didn't notice at the time, but as you look backwards and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you for that moment. That's step one. Step two is about petitions. What is your prayer for today? So as you review your day, look back, ask the Lord for for the light of knowledge, to know God and to know yourself and how God sees you. So we ask for that grace, the grace of knowledge to see where God is working, to see who God is and who we are. Because again, this is about self-reflection as well. Coming to not only see ourselves, but ultimately to see and love ourselves as God sees us and loves us, which can be very difficult sometimes. I'm gonna keep going through these steps. You can feel free to pause. Uh, at each step so you have more time to think, more time to pray, especially as we move along, and I'll tell you when when that is, uh, feel free to press pause. So step three is actually reviewing uh, your day a little bit more closely. The first question is, where have I felt true joy today? Where have I felt true joy today? And depending on what you're going through, you might be having a very difficult day, you might be having a very difficult week, a month, who knows? 
in, our, in an overriding theme in our lives might be depression or might be sorrow or suffering or challenging. And yet, even in the midst of this overarching thing we're going through, there's still joy to be had. There's still moments of grace that God is trying to grab our attention. So despite whatever you might be going through that might be challenging or difficult, there was a moment of joy. Think about where that was. It doesn't have to be huge. It could be small. But think about where did you feel true joy today? And the next question is probably easier to answer for a lot of people. What has troubled me today? What has troubled me today? Another is what has challenged me today? Now, trouble and challenge are two different things. Trouble is just the challenges, the obstacles, the difficulties we face, and the hardships kind of thing. Those are troubling. Uh, the challenge in this phrasing, what has challenged me today, it's really about challenging you to grow, challenging you to be better. You know, so, so if we're supposed to have patience, how was I challenged today to have patience? Sort of thing. So that's that's part of it. Um, the next question is where and when did I pause today? Because a lot of times we we need to push the pause button in our lives. We need to slow down. Uh, so much of our lives are lived on autopilot and lived at a fast pace, and we can feel the the, the craziness of the pace of life, the hecticness. Uh, because we're running at the world's pace, we're not running at a at God's pace, at a grace pace. Many times we need to slow down and push the pause button, take a grace break, and allow God into our lives. Uh, or more accurately, allow ourselves to recognize that God's always there. We need to put ourselves in God's presence. And so when and where did I pause today? It's a good habit to get into, to take moments throughout the day to pause, to reflect, to remember who we are, to remember God's presence in our lives. The last question is, have I noticed God's presence in any of this? Okay, so whether it was joy or trouble or challenge or in a pause the other day, did I notice God's presence in any way? And it could be little things, it could be big things. It could be, you know, I was on a walk and I saw uh, a flower, I saw a cardinal. A friend of mine loves seeing cardinals because the red color stands out and they, they see this as a symbol of the Holy Spirit and, and God's presence. Little reminder, hi, I'm with you. You know, It could be something simple like that. It could be a song you needed to hear at the right time. It could have been any number of things. So where is it that you have seen God's presence in any of this? That's all that is for step three. Uh, you can push pause to go through this slowly. And, and and again, you can write all these things down, right down in a journal. And step four is a response. What is your response? In light of everything that you've reviewed in your day, what is your response to God in your life? And this is a great time. Step three, step four, all the steps really are a great time to, to just write it down. Take a page out of a notebook and write down everything that's going on. Why? Because writing helps us to process, helps us to understand, helps us to reflect, also helps us to keep account of where God is. Because the temptation and the moment of depression, the feelings tell you one thing. The feeling tells you that there's no reason to hope, there's no nothing good. But keeping this journal, your mind says, well, look at the book. Look at what you said. And you go backwards and you see that, no, in fact, God has been present all along. God is there, God is love, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay with this, and I'm going to trust in all these little ways that I have seen God's presence in my life. Again, so this is why journaling is important. That's step four. Step five is to look ahead. Um, as I look ahead, what comes to mind? As I think about tomorrow, as I think about the rest of the day. So if you're doing this in the morning, if you're doing this afternoon, what do you still have to look forward to uh, throughout the day? Uh, with what spirit do I want to enter into the rest of my day or enter into tomorrow? Again, this is part of our response. As I look forward, uh, 
I look ahead, whether it be something challenging that I don't want to face or something wonderful that I do want to get to, what type of spirit do I want to have as I approach this? Again, it's a moment of prayer, reflection, and journal. All of this is just part one. This is, this is part of our daily reflection, our daily prayer uh, as we go through this. It's a habit to get into. It's a habit to, to listen to. Uh, a recommendation I want to give you is um, not only do this daily examine every day throughout this retreat, but also make time to read the scriptures. Uh, I will have the weekly reflection. You can listen to the weekly reflection a couple of times during the week if you like, get more out of it, or read the daily scriptures, read the Psalms, um, read the gospel of the day, whatever it happens to be, continue to feed your soul every day. So that's all I have for you for today for this introductory talk. The next talk will be talk two or talk one, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to wear this week one. So the next one will be about Mary Magdalene and you know, the resurrection, her encounter with Jesus in, in that day, that, that, that Sunday of resurrection and how she experienced that. Again, it's an invitation for us to experience that in John's Gospel, chapter 20. I'll also introduce the theme song for this retreat at that moment. So we'll go ahead and um, end with a prayer as we go forward. Uh, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Father, we praise you and thank you for this season of resurrection, this season where you send your Son, Jesus, to search us out, to find us, and bring us back to new life in him. We pray that you open our eyes, open our hearts and our minds to you. Give us the grace of discipline and commitment to walk these last 30 days of Easter in preparation for Pentecost. We pray that you grant us the grace to see you and to love you and to know you more. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.